I'm going to refresh your memory on some of the algebraic formatting rules just so that you don't have to lose points as you're going through the course. Maybe you needed a little refresher and just make sure I know you have a basic understanding of how we need to write things. So you should know your terminology of some difference, product, and quotient for the operations. Now let's make sure we know how to write it. So it really doesn't matter what the phrasing is. If we have any number and we're supposed to multiply it by a variable, and a variable is just going to be a placeholder, oftentimes that variable is going to be referred to as a number in a written phrase. Um, and say I have five times a number. Well, we don't write it like this. In the algebra world, the proper format is we put the number first, and if multiplication is being involved with a variable, that variable is just touching the other thing, and that means those two values get multiplied. So we always write the number first and then the variable next to it. No operation signs in between. It's repetitive, it's redundant, it's not clean. This looks cleaner than that does. Okay, so and even if the phrase says a number times two, it might say a number first and then it's multiplying by two, but we never write the variable before the number. And that number is called the coefficient. It's just the number, it's, but that's the fancy term. Okay, so that's one thing. And even if you had two variables that you were supposed to multiply together, you would just write them side by side. So that whenever you were told what that variable is worth, you just replace it in parentheses, plug in a number, I'm just making up numbers here, and then you go ahead and solve that it is 12, it is not three, we are not, or seven, we are not adding them together, we are multiplying. Another thing is that PEMDAS rules math. It's basically your recipe for doing math to make sure you get the right answer. And the only way you can interfere with that process is with parentheses. So the power of parentheses. You might be given a phrase that says twice the sum of three and a number. Okay, so if I have twice the sum, so twice is meaning multiplying something by two, and it says sum it means addition, twice the sum, so it means the sum of, uh, say, a number and three, and the only way that I can add and then find out what double this value is, is if I'm wrapping the number up or that operation up in parentheses, and then I plug the number that then needs to be multiplied by that in front. So this is set up in a factored form. Whenever I have a value within parentheses and I'm supposed to multiply it by something, we always put that value in front. No operation symbol again, because this parenthesis here is meaning whatever's touching it is multiplying by what's inside of it. So then this lets me know that I add, and then once I have some value for this, I can then multiply it by here. But what if we aren't given a value for x to be able to simplify what's inside of this? And I needed to simplify it. That's the thing about algebra. They want you to take it as far as you can go until there's nothing left to do until you have a value for your variable or are told what it's equals so that you can then solve for that. So what we do is we use the distributive property. That means this number is multiplying by each individual term within the parentheses. It's not just multiplying to the front number, it's multiplying to both of them. So I have to go 2 times x, which is 2x, and a 2 times 3, which is 6, and I'm adding those values together. So this is the uh, distributed or simplified form of this earlier expression. The last thing I want to make sure you know is how to handle percentages. So there are two steadfast rules that apply to percentages. One, say you're given, um, say you're told that something is, oh, you get a discount and so things are 80% of the cost. You're going to pay 80% of that cost. We can't work with a number in its percentage form. There's, there's not a button you can type into your calculator. So you need to convert this to its decimal form. So step one, convert your percentage into its decimal. So to do that, 
we just turn and move the decimal forward two places. So that would be, once it goes there, it's 0 0.80. And if you want, you could even simplify to just 0.8 because that zero really isn't adding any value. But sometimes it's useful to have that two decimal places. So that's okay. Because this is 80% out of 100. Eight, 80 cents out of a dollar is 0 0.80 or eight out of 10, okay? So once we have that, the second thing is usually percentages are dealing with money. If I'm saying I'm paying 8% of a cost, or 80% of a cost, I can't have the cost and then, oh, I'm just gonna take away 0.8 of that. That's saying 80 cents. So what if my item was a dollar? Oh, I, I'm only gonna pay 20 cents for it. What if my item was $10? Oh, I'm gonna pay $9.20 for it. That's not much of a deal. So we don't keep that percentage value or that decimal value by itself. It's always attached to some other value. Its meaning only makes sense when it's applied to some other greater value. So if I'm paying 80% of the cost, I'm point, paying 0 0.80 of the original amount. Of in math means multiplication. So percentages convert to a decimal and then attach them to some other value, usually a variable, with multiplication in order to make them meaningful. So that then once you're, you find out what the original price is, you plug it in for X, you then multiply it by 0.80, and then you get to find out the cost.